What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and this week we are filming from the void. But don't worry, there's still news in here, so let's talk about it. In some interesting Dart Zone news, an orange MK2 was spotted on Drac during Jared's epic nerf battle, and that was later confirmed by Dart Zone to be an online exclusive to Walmart that hopefully will be coming out soon. When uh, asked about it, there was no release date, but a confirmation that it is a real thing that will exist for everyone, because Dart Zone says this version will also be available in Canada. And I'm sure people overseas, if you really want it, you can find someone kind enough to send it to you. And in more repaint news, uh, the Nexus repaint that's like a crazy digital neon camo is confirmed to be a real thing and not Photoshop. Uh, Nerf War Battle showed it off on his Instagram and he described it as Miami Vice, which I think is pretty fitting. It's a very outrun kind of theme, maybe even a little bit sporty or like bubblegum ice cream. I, I like it a lot. Uh, it's blue plastic with black and pink camo over it and it's pretty beautiful. But again, no word on the price or the exact release date just yet. We've seen the Mega XL name in several distribution site leaks and target listings, but now Piggy has leaked a section of the Mega XL Double Crushers box. And the, uh, th this photo specifically compares the actual size uh, Mega XL to a normal Mega Dart. Uh, the XL darts appear to be closer to demolisher rockets in size. They are absolutely massive. And I have a feeling we'll be seeing a lot of XL master keys when we finally get these blasters on shelves for real. Uh, there are several users in the history of Nerf modding Discord server that photoshopped together some more detailed analysis. If this box image is actually to scale, the extra large darts are about one and one third mega darts tall and a little less than two mega darts wide. Uh, <laughs> excellent uh, conversion ratios from the Nerf community, of course. Uh, there's still no details on the release date at this time, but I am super stoked uh, for this ammo type. Do I think it's going to fly well? Not really. Do I think it'll be fun? Yes, I love Mega. A couple of people have gotten their hands on the newest Ultra Blaster early. Uh, both uh, Buff Daddy from Blaster Hub and Brad from American Foam got to do a quick review of the Ultra Select. Um, a quick recap about this blaster, it is $60 MSRP, it's a full auto flywheeler, and its gimmick is that it has two magwells that can swap back and forth, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, it comes with two 10 dart ultra mags, 10 normal ultra darts, and 10 brand new pinpoint darts. Uh, there's no official name for that quite yet, but I, I like the name pinpoint. Um, the internals of the blaster are pretty similar to a rapid strike with the scotch yoke style pusher and about 2 to 3 DPS. Not super fast, but pretty manageable, honestly. Um, what's pretty cool is all of the functional internals just come right out of the shell altogether. The flywheel cage, the pusher, the trigger group, all of that. So that should make rewiring super simple, which is pretty good because the DRM on the ultra darts is a little, gets a little crazy. Uh, as far as the darts themselves, these new pinpoint darts, uh, American Foam put them t through their paces a little bit in his video. Uh, the pinpoints are averaging 103 FPS out of this blaster, while the standard Ultra gets about 95. So that's uh, a surprising increase, as well as being more accurate than normal Ultra. I know that's a pretty low bar, but according to both Blaster Hub and American Foam, they are a more accurate dart. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing comparisons of these darts, both in other blasters and in springers. Um, I'm this, this might be a little bit of a saving grace for ultra. And as far as the blaster itself goes there, I think there's some pretty cool mod potential. Brad had a great idea in his video. Uh, someone 3d printed a magwell that holds more mags and <laughs> just, just doop, 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 doop. That would be so cool. And I think it's doable. Apparently, bows are in. Uh, there are a ton that have been revealed in the last two weeks, and I'm pretty excited about it. Magstrike King 849 found Fortnite Tiantina's Kaboom bow on shelves in what appears to be a Walmart in Canada. Uh, I'm not sure if those are coming to other areas of the world anytime soon, but I am looking forward to it because it's a bow, which is awesome, and it shoots Mega, which is awesome. 
And not to be left behind, Busby decided to go ahead and release their own bow as well. This is the Air Warriors Compact Bow. Uh, this one's mag-fed, which is super cool. You can fire definitely way more than one. Uh, the strings of the bow do go through the pull handle, so that might actually be elastic powered. Um, the large fold-out blow arms are obviously not practical in terms of space, but it looks like it'll be a good time. And then Hasbro decided, you know what? No, we're going to go bigger with the Nerf Rip Rocket. It's like the Fobo, but bigger. And it looks like another new ammo type. So to fire this thing, you can either pull back and let the rocket fly, or you can pull back, lock it, and then use the trigger to fire it. Uh, they're claiming over 50 feet. And the kid in that photo is having an absolute blast, so I cannot wait to try that one. Uh, and then, you know, our, our hobby likes to get into this space too, so Captain Slug also has a bow coming soon. Uh, the bow mania has gotten to Captain Slug, um, so this mag-fed bow will, will have more information on that when it actually releases. And now it's time for Rapid Strikes, with not a Rapid Strike because we're in the void, we can't find those here. <laughs> there is a new Nerf Dog Blaster, and this one is not for flinging tennis balls. It shoots bacon flavored vortex. I mean, not actual vortex, it's really thin, but, but still, I wish it was around in breakfast time. There's a new two pack of pistols from Busby. It's the Adventure Force Dual Shots. Dual is in dueling, not dual. Two, because each pistol has three rotating barrels. Uh, it looks like it's an updated version of the Dual Force pack, and this is a Walmart exclusive, and no word on price or availability quite yet. Third party hyper exists now. That was pretty quick. Uh, the current price for 100 rounds is $15 on AliExpress, and the genuine rounds are $20 in Walmart for the same amount. That's not a huge savings. Um, it probably gets bigger with the bigger amounts, but I'm still very interested in a comparison of the two, because I know the early rival clones, not so good. Hey everybody, I'm Radio Silence 187. This is the Cage Fighter. This is a compact bullpup dual stage short dart blaster featuring full size flywheels. There's 3S130 size motors on the inside, room for a MOSFET board. There's a dual stage trigger, an N20 full auto pusher, and there's room here for a power switch, a voltage meter, and room for a medium sized 3S LiPo in the back. The files are available on Thingiverse. Just look for the RS187 Cage Fighter. There was an inventory leak on Target, and so we get to see the Elite 2.0 Eagle Point RD8. Well, at least the name. Uh, I assume that RD means revolving drum, if the shockwave is anything to use as a template for their weird abbreviations. Uh, it looks like it'll be $20.99, uh, but no word yet on when it will be released. The world's largest mod party will return in 2021. They're planning it for September 11th and 12th and plan on changing things up. What that means specifically, I am not sure, but last year's was pretty fun and I hope that this year's will be too. The Dart Zone Pro Mark III is real. Dart Zone finally dropped a teaser about the blaster, but it was all leaked one day before the official announcement by History of Nerf Modding user AB Quintic. Uh, this blaster is going to release in fall of 2021 in the USA and Canada simultaneously, which hardly ever happens. That's pretty awesome. Uh, the price for the blaster is still unknown, but we are speculating it'll probably be around the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.1 range. Uh, they did say at one point that it would be the most expensive pro blaster to date. Um, but what makes this cool and worth it is that it's a select fire flywheeler. Uh, it's got a huge chonky switch that you can just to semi or to full auto. And it can also fire full or half length darts uh, like many of the other pro options. I think this is especially cool to come uh, as a stock feature in a flywheeler. Uh, I'm interested to see what's inside of this thing. How do they make their pusher work with both? Um, it might come with a new dart type. Um, in the video, they showed yellow foam with purple heads that could be a recolor of existing darts. Uh, it does appear to have bamboo style foam. Uh, we, we can't know for sure until we see some more details on that. Uh, it looks like it includes a curved 15 dart 
a short mag as well as a curved full length mag, the mag adapter to switch between the two, of course, uh, as well as a buffer tube stock and a red dot or holographic sight. If it works, that'd be pretty cool, but it might just be a cosmetic. We can't tell just yet. Overall, this thing looks really awesome. It's really triangular, which is an interesting way to, to, to hide the flywheel cage bulge. And select fire is a super cool feature to have uh, stock in a blaster. Um, I'm really interesting, interested to see what the modding potential for this would be, or if it's even worth modding. I want to know what kind of batteries it takes. I, I am so curious to see more of this blaster. Uh, I, I've, I have been thoroughly teased, that's for sure. And now it's time for the mod of the week, and this week it goes to Frogs Are Our Friends with his Rampage inline clip. In addition to a really nice username, this guy has a clever blaster. And we've seen inline blasters plenty of times, so what makes this one special? It's the reciprocating barrel. It automatically moves the barrel towards the bolt and eliminates the dead space that's created when you fire darts, and it eliminates that need to dip the blaster down to chamber the next dart. This is a super technical build. Uh, other than the bolt, the 3D prints are mostly just used as spacers and fittings, while the brass work is what's doing all the heavy lifting. And using a rival mag to spring power the barrel is just so clever. I really, really enjoy just learning how this blaster was made and how it works. And thank you so much for sharing it. It's awesome. And that's all the news for this week. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, the links to everything that I talked about are down in the description, uh, along with the like button, the subscribe button. It would make me very happy if you uh, poked those. Um, I'm here every other week, 9 a.m. Pacific, giving you the news. Ooh, it was a lot this time. Uh, if you like my shirt, boo -boo, boo -boo, it's probably still available on phoneblastshop.com. And what's cool about it is $10 of every uh, shirt purchase goes to uh, our center in Reno, which is a charity for uh, LGBTQ plus people in my local community. And that makes me very happy and I'm very excited to deliver that check. Um, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time from Not The Void. Ah! Thanks guys!